from downtown. Wait. You take this Fuck one. Fuck you. Now you take this one. Now you take this one. These aren't even funny. Old Joy is Kelly Reichardt's 2006 indie film about a soon-to-be father, Mark, who takes up the chance to reunite with his old buddy, Kurt, on a weekend camping trip. The melancholic essence of this old friendship reveals itself to us in slow moments of realism as Mark finds that this friendship has been dead for a long time. Mark's unassurance of his duty as a father fades as he realizes that he and so much else has already moved See what on. I can get for it. Since it's gone, man. No way. The rent got to be too heavy. Now it's a smoothie place. Rejuicenation. Oh no. End of an era. Reichart masterfully plays with the meditative but intense silence that permeates the majority of this film, whilst also framing this journey as within the realm of something greater. This film's apparent sweetness of reminiscent memories is often cut short by moments of opposition between our main characters. One of the first scenes displaying this is when Mark and Kurt seem to get I think lost. We're somewhere in this area. They're looking at a map together as Kurt rolls yeah. a joint. In this, we observe two clearly opposing perspectives as Mark closely examines the map, aiming to find his way, while Kurt is perfectly fine meandering through as it is more important to him just to be beside Mark. I need a little space. Mark shoots open the door and grabs the map. We are left to sit with Kurt as we wonder why Mark acted so abruptly and whether it was intentional, if at all. We sit in this moment for a long time. Mark is separated from us and Kurt, not only through the windshield, but also in the framing as he is all but entirely off screen. Then we move inside the car with Kurt as we see Mark march off for seemingly no reason. A phone rings and Mark comes running back. Our position inside the car helps us to view Mark's actions from Kurt's perspective, an idea that will be key when hearing Kurt's worries later in the film. Being inside the car really emphasizes that Mark is walking away from us, and we're still not sure why. On the phone with his wife, Mark continues off as we hear faint moments of his conversation. When he comes back, we get an eerily intimate close-up of Mark's mark as he says, The sign up there is literally blank. This scene initiates a rift between Mark and Kurt, where each moment of abruptness is continually cut short by a door opening, a phone calling, or an intense close-up. We are given a lot of silence to think about why we are viewing it this way, why Mark is acting like this, why he seemingly seems fine to be out in the wilderness now after answering a phone call from his wife. It seems more and more apparent that Mark was simply using this trip as an escape, whereas Kurt really missed their friendship. This division between them coalesces when the two are at the fire pit. The framing of this scene emphasizes their division as they sit on separate pieces of furniture, Kurt in a relaxed position, while Mark sits arms crossed and knees close. These positions foreshadow their intense conversation when Kurt opens up about a worry that Mark and him aren't close anymore. I miss you, Mark. I miss you really, really bad. I want us to be real friends again. There's something between us and I don't like it. I want it to go away. It's rambly and awkward and true as it is clear that something isn't the same. Man, what are you talking about? We're fine. <laughs> are you serious? Do you really think that? Of course. Of course I do. We're, we're fine. We're totally fine. Trying to steer away from vulnerability, Mark know. says, we're fine, we're fine and Kurt drunkenly tries to redeem himself. God. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm just being crazy, I know. Don't pay any attention to me, okay? Trying to break the awkwardness in Mark's unwillingness to open up, Kurt begins to reload a toy gun eager simply to break the silence. Whereas before the silence left space to meditate on things, mm. Kurt just wants to move on in the scenario, realizing that Mark won't give in. The story only works with the tremendous acting of Daniel London and Will Oldham. 
these moments of silence between them feel so natural, an off-kilter moment of intimacy between two old friends. Two hands is the responsible shooting. One hand is renegade shooting. Yeah, renegade. I'll try lefty. Switch, switch, switch hit shooting. I think one As more an independent shot, filmmaker, one more Kelly Reichardt has a lot more creative freedom than the average director. She is able to direct a sequence with 10 minutes of silence and really commit to those small moments of realism that otherwise might be considered rare in a high budget film. These moments of quietness force the audience to think, as Kurt so aptly remarks on in the beginning of the film. And most of all, it has this otherworldly peacefulness about it. Uh, you can really think. It sounds awesome. You can't, you can't get real quiet anymore. Throughout the film, Kurt seems to allude to something that actually has a lot to do with the film's themes. While we're given small moments of connection with Kurt, for the majority of the film, we are viewing this trip through Mark's perspective, as we are granted more and more information about his lives and motivations. Kurt seems to be unintentionally guiding Mark in his realization that life has moved on and life will continue to do so. There's a moment during this fire pit scene when Kurt sparks the conversation about a theory of his. It's like this, see? Sometimes things look like they don't have any order, and then from a different level, you realize that it does have order. It's like climbing a mountain. Look around, you see trees and rocks and bushes pressing around you, and then you get above the tree line, you see everything you just went through, and it all, like, comes together. You know, you see that it has a shape after all. While the speech clearly relates to a lot of Mark's problems, Mark is instead simply observing his old friends, coming to terms with the fact that they live totally different lives now. Kurt continuously tries to get Mark involved in some type of conversation, but Mark finds it increasingly difficult, either because he cannot relate to Kurt or because he refuses to relax given the stress of his life right now. Yo, 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 yo. The framing of this film serves two purposes, to emphasize this rift between Kurt and Mark, and to create an atmosphere of realism critical to understanding this friendship. As the film progresses, we are not granted increasingly close angles of Kurt and Mark's journey. Rather, they are framed against large landscapes, forces modeled by the nature around them. As well, the pair are increasingly framed in opposition divided by a car or windshield, walking single file so as not to look each other in the eye, or even just sitting differently. The farther they travel together, the more they understand how divided they really are, their estrangement mirrored in the framing of each wide-angle shot. This film really intends to frame the story in particular as small, given the spy angles and muffled sound, while simultaneously begging the question of its importance purely because it exists. Dogs in distress. There's a moment towards the beginning of the film when Mark and Kurt are exiting a grocery store. They are shot from a far distance as we see other cars or people and hear muffled fragments of other conversations. This moment for me really emphasized Mark and Kurt's story just as equal and as real as anyone else in this small town. We see a group of women and wonder what journey they are on as well. These moments bring a depth to a quiet story like this one. It's rare to find films that pay tribute to real friendships, and I think that this film skillfully remarks on that notion whilst framing it against these large landscapes, ensuring the story to be small yet important. The film forces you to think in the many moments of silence, even if it will be painful. Reichardt continually hones in on the major thesis of this film. In these moments of reminiscing of, on old memories, being with an old friend, thinking about the old joy that came with all of that, we are forced to view them simply as that old. Nonetheless, these old joys are indeed beautiful, but time moves on. You still have this. Mark, you really hold on to shit. Surrounded by the stresses of everyday life, it's hard to realize that time is passing. It's only when we take a step back, when we get to the top of the mountain, when we reconnect with an old friend that we realize that life simply moves on.